You're welcome back. Education, health and economic transformation are the three key needs of every Zongo community in Ghana. Now, this is according to Islamic scholar and spokesperson for Chief Imam Sheikh Aramea Shaibu. Speaking to John News on the AM show, Sheikh Aramea enunciated the essence of these needs to Zongo communities in the country, and thus they must be prioritized. And our priority now is education. Education. And that education, at what levels and what form? Is it going to come in the form of um, uh, scholarships? Is, it, is there going to be separate institutions that are going to be built? Well, I mean, what is it? Is it educational support of our, some of our schools that are dilapidated? I mean, what structure do we okay. have in mind? That is one thing. Right. Secondly, economic empowerment. Economic empowerment of, of our, many of our Zongo communities in areas such as um, food and nutrition. Our women cook a lot and they are known to be very good cook cooks. And yet they are living under the poverty line because uh, there has not been empowerment of expanding, um, raising their standard into a restaurant level as opposed to the chop bar where she hides somewhere to be selling. And children and the head don't go to school and they become the tools for violence when, they, when the time comes. And I think it must change. Okay. Um, Fulani's, <coughs> look. I insist that let Fulani, not Fulani as a tribe, but heads men that produce for us meat. No household in this country uh, lives without eating the meat as a nutritional need. And when you take the meat, you must talk about the source of the meat. Livestock is a huge industry. Now, if you can regulate it well for the Zongo people, then in one effect, you are improving their economic condition. When once you improve economic status of people, you know what it, you, you have done? Your quality of life is going to improve. Mm. You can cater for your children, but we'll okay. pay school fees and, 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 and so on and, right. and so forth. For Deputy Executive Secretary at the Office of the National Chief Imam, Osman Seydou, Zongo communities have seen tremendous improvement in their livelihoods over the last few months. He, however, advocates the need for increase in development irrespective of which political parties at the helm of affairs to ensure Zongo dwellers have better lives, he spoke to Roland Walker. Oh. Now, we've had a lot of promises from previous governments, some of which have been fulfilled, some of which has not been fulfilled. Now, um, coming to this government, they've made a lot of promises. I mean, typically, what has gotten a lot of attention from almost all the people in Ghana is the Zongo Fund. We want to see how best they would utilize this opportunity to help education in the Zongo community, to help sanitation in the Zongo community, to also help Islamic education in the Zongo community, as well as creating more jobs for the people in the Zongo communities. However, one thing that should be made clear is that even though the national chief imam is non-partisan, he would do everything possible to support anything that is good to support the people in the Zongo community, and I emphasize Ghana at large. So if that is the case, how then do you hope to do the collaboration and do the liaison to make sure that the things that are intended for the Zongo communities are really given back to them? Yes, we, we, would, we would ensure as, as citizens, we would ensure that we what the government is supposed to do, we're going to put them on their toes and ensure they fulfill their promise. What we're going to do is we will definitely will be having a meeting to decide, I mean, how we're going to go about this. But I keep on emphasizing that the, the National Chief Imam's Office is non-political and that should be clear to everybody. Any party that comes on with good, good ideas and good things that would support the community, why not? They would embrace it and support it to happen. We would see what the MPP would be coming out. They determine how they want to go about this. But we would also on our part as individuals and citizens and Zungu community would also demand that what supposed to be done is done for the Zungu community so that at the end of the day, this will be the betterment of the Zungu community, Ghanaians and the world at large. Now, we don't, if you want to go and do some lobbying, you also need to go with something on the table. What have you identified you think confronts the communities across the country, the Zungus, that need to be 
paid keen attention to? The National Chief Imam Office was a member of the National Sanitation um, Committee. And we've, through, through that, we've done a lot of works in the community. So we are going to come up with, from that experience, having been in the National Communication and um, Sanitation Committee, there are issues that would definitely table because the learning curve is going to be to our advantage because we've been there before. We are also going to talk about education and would, would like to also deal deep a little bit about Islamic education. Those are things that we'll definitely put on the table. We'll talk about sanitation, we'll talk about education, we'll talk about creating jobs for the people in the community. But most of it, um, we are really going to talk about health as well. We, we see that catering for the next generation is critical in developing the mass crop of people and, and communities. But we have high literacy levels, and that also translates into not having the crop of young people and the talent and the resource that will have jobs, create the jobs, and then contribute to their society. Is that a worry for the Office of the National Chief? Raymond, really it is, but I can tell you with, without any shadow of doubtness that there has been a lot of improvement. Let me take this community we are talking about, we are talking in, for example. We currently have not less than 35 currently at the Islamic University. Either two, it was not like that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that there has been improvement. If you go to Zongo communities like Shukura, Nima, Newtown, Ashaiman, Kasua, we have seen a lot of improvement in terms of education. So look, we are telling the world that gone would be the days when um, the Zongo communities will be left behind. Away from that immediate past, Finance Minister Seth Tepe is advocating amendments to the Transition Act to ensure orderly transfer of government business from one administration to the other. Mr. Tepe has been under pressure from contractors who have either completed or nearing completion of government contracts, demanding payment before the exit of the NDC administration. As part of his reflections on his term in office, Mr. Tepe told journalist in Accra there must be an orderly transfer of government business, just as it is done for political transfer of power. We now have the Transition Act, which is good. You know, so you see the <coughs> handing over notes, you see other things. But I'm of a firm belief that uh, having gone through you know, three transitions, two of them, one party to the other, the other one, one party, actually four, one party succeeding itself, or if you like, if you go to NDC, one, a party succeeding itself, a party handing over, then a party succeeding itself, handing over. <clears throat> I think when the hiccups, I think there are too many hiccups in the economy. You know, anxiety about whether my contract will be handed by contractors, anxiety, public servants not being sure about the what they have to do during the transition, uh, leaks and other things. I believe that, like the way we've done on the political side, I believe either the Transition Act or the PFM Act, you know, should be amended to give an orderly, you know, uh, <coughs> transition on the economy. Because often when we talk about post-election, um, expenditures or expenditures that come up after the elections. I realize that some of it is not expenditures before the elections. It is the rush by contractors, suppliers, everybody who want to be paid for expenditures which if a party were even succeeding itself, it would have considered to be normal. The fear that that will be tacked and that kind of, you know, so that's one of the reflections. Then the other one is just, you know, um, I've been out on the zero financing. I believe I would as a nation, as a, to the nation going out, you know, to say, if you are negotiating with a fund and you are the finance minister, you are very circumspect. I believe that, you know, that is something which, you know, I need to show the fiscal risk uh, if we are going to continue. I'm doing that. <clears throat> Nobody has asked me to do it. I just cleared it with a chief. I think I owe it you know, to the nation and to the incoming administration, after all, it's a government. So that as they go in, they can benefit from, from that experience. Those are two key, you know, um, areas which are more like a reflection. 
Now to some news from the Ashanti region. 13 people were killed in domestic and other fire outbreaks in the Ashanti region last year. The Ghana National Fire Service says, though the figure falls short of what was recorded in 2015, there is a lot to be done to prevent such tragedy. Officials are, however, patting themselves on the back from what they say is success in preventing fire outbreaks at the Kumasi Central Market over a one-year period. Ashanti Regional Fire Commander Semeko Kwekufiajo says the progress made is the result of preventive measures introduced by the service. Ohiming Terrier has more. Out of 1,271 fire cases recorded between January and November last year, 418, representing 33%, were domestic. It represents a 10% decline from 423 recorded incidents recorded over the same period in 2015. While the bushfire went up from 120 in 2015 to 347 cases in 2016, though commercial fires shot up from 139 to 169 over the same period, authorities are happy at the gains made so far. The response time to attend to fires also improved significantly. This means the service responded swiftly to calls to fire incidents on time. Mr. Fiojo says a lot went in to the strides made, especially at the Kumasi Central Market, which have been seen at least of three fire incidents annually over the five years. He says intensified fire education as well as standby personnel and fire tender deployment at the market made the difference. It's all due to uh, the various sensitization programs that we have embarked on. For instance, we have embarked on door-to-door, house-to-house, fire safety awareness creation. Uh, we've done a lot of um, sensitization programs. We've done a lot of sensitization programs and even as we speak, we have formed a market tax force that goes round all the markets within the metropolis, make sure that things are done right, and as well educate the market women on the dangers of fire, uh, uh, for fires, and then how to protect and then prevent fires from occurring. Position one fire engine inside the market, which hitherto we were not doing, and we've been able to identify water hydrants within the market. So that in the event of any uh, 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 outbreak, they are there 24-7. And apart from that, they, we have trained the market uh, watchmen. Mr. Fiajo says the command will work tirelessly to reduce fire-related incidents by at least 60%. He wants the public to support the service by adhering to fire safety regulations, especially on provision of fire extinguishers and detectors. Uh, the attitude of you know, the people too is critical. Most of the times you do the education and then it is up to them to, uh, you know, to, to, to take it and then to adhere to what we tell them. Most homes don't have fire extinguishers you know, and smoke detecting uh, devices. And these things are not too expensive. For instance, uh, a one kg dry powder extinguisher can go for 20 Ghana cities or 30 Ghana cities in the, uh, on the open market. So, and these are, uh, 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 this uh, extinguisher, in the event of any fire outbreak, because every fire outbreak starts from a very s small stage. So once you detect it quickly, you just use the, uh, the fire extinguisher to put it off without it spreading to anywhere. But you see, they don't have those extinguishers, and that is why we have even embarked on the Dumja project. It is our uh, target to reduce the incident of fire and other related disasters by, uh, by 60%. And it is our hope uh, that, uh, by the grace of God, we will achieve that target. Oheming oh, Terra filed that report from the Ashanti region. You're watching Draw News today with me, Bennett.